So here we can say on average, properties are managing to sell 10% above asking price. Today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the rampant bidding wars and multiple offer situations occurring for freehold properties in Toronto and the GTA and how and why this have, will have an effect on the condominium market as well. Hello everyone, this is Sam from Siberia 6 Real Estate and Remax Realtor on Real Tank. As always, feel free to find my contact information in the description box with regards to my Gmail, Instagram, and my office address. Get in touch with me if you have any questions or comments, I would be happy to talk to you. For those who have gotten in touch with me via Gmail or Instagram and have not gotten back to you yet, I'm quite busy and I appreciate your patience on that matter. Furthermore, if you happen to enjoy my videos, please feel free to subscribe, comment, like, and review. That's only if you actually like my videos. If you don't, or if you do, but you don't want to subscribe, feel not to, you're never obliged to do so, but your support in that regard is appreciated as well. Anyways, let's get to the point of today's video, which is, as I aforementionally stated, the rampant bidding wars occurring right now in the city of Toronto. Now, I've talked about this in the past, but the problem seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. And for this reason, it is causing an inflated trend wherein the average sold price is greatly outpacing the average asking price on average, wherever we look, whether we look in Toronto or York region, and I'm gonna go through the numbers shortly. However, please do know that I'm not speaking from just the numbers and on paper, I am speaking from experience on both sides of the matter. I just sold a property uh, just uh, last week where we did the same thing because it was in the best interest of our clients, where we induced the bidding war with a price that was below market value and asking price that was below market value in order to bring in multiple offers. And we put a offer presentation date where we got five offers competing against one another and we went with the best offer. Similarly, on the buy Buying side, when I'm trying to book showings for my clients, all I do see are offer presentation dates. It seems to me that not a lot of properties are listed at market value or a little above what uh, is reasonable for market value because the seller wants to leave room for negotiations, uh, which is a thing that happens in more uh, moderate markets, but even a little bit of a hot market, you see that as well. But today's market for freehold properties is so astoundingly hot is so severely, severely hot that all the properties, I would say nine out of 10 properties where I am looking on the behalf of a buyer in the terms of freehold properties, nine out of 10 properties have a offer presentation date that is approaching within the next two days and they get probably 10 showings per day because buyers are gonna cannibalize each other in a sense over this property. Now that's my experience on both the selling and buying side, but let's look at the numbers as I said. Let's start with Midtown to Downtown Toronto. And these numbers are factoring in only 2021. So if we're looking at the numbers uh, for every area and right now from Midtown to Downtown Toronto with regards to the Toronto real estate market so far in 2021. So from January 1st to February 16th. The average asking price based on 150 transactions so far in 2021 in the Toronto real estate market is $2,017,000. And the average selling price is $2,044,000. Now you have to understand this accounts for every single property type except condominiums. So we're talking about townhomes, freehold detached, freehold semi-detached, bungalows, site split, all those property types. And based on 150 transactions so far, on average, we see that properties are selling on average 6% above asking price. And the reason is obviously, as I previously stated, is because sellers are pricing the properties a little bit lower than market value, in some cases, a lot lower than market value, in order to induce a bidding war. And naturally, the property will go above asking and probably above what it's actually worth in reality anyways, because this bidding war multiple offer situation is very, very seller friendly. A lot of times in bidding war situations, a lot of buyers take it personally and the question does not become how much is the property worth it becomes how much is someone else is willing to pay for it and can i outpay them however if you work with a really good real estate agent uh, luckily you know you might be advised against doing that uh, at all times unless you really do truly love the property and it speaks to you but this is on average if we look at the high the worst case scenario of this we actually had a property that went 45 percent above asking price However, this is not all, and in fact, it is the most mild case of this situation. If we want a more severe case of this occurring, we have to look into York, more specifically, central York, such as Vaughan uh, and Richmond Hill, essential and you know relative to York region, which is a big area further south. 
And why are we looking into these areas? Well, because the real estate market, as I've said many times, for freehold properties is very hot all over the place, but especially in York Region and Durham. So further east and further up north. Although the average price of a property uh, comparatively so uh, is lower than a very comparable unit or a house in the city of Toronto. Uh, so the city of Toronto is still more expensive. Year over year, cities like Richmond Hill and Vaughan are seeing a higher increase in average price uh, in Durham as well compared to Toronto. So prices have gone up more, yet they are still cheaper relatively so. So, so point being, although the rampant bidding wars and the multiple offer situations are occurring all over the Toronto real estate market in the GTA real estate market so far in 2021, it is most pronounced as a case and as a example in the city of Richmond Hill and Vaughan. And let's take a look at those numbers. And they should be clear because based on 200 transactions so far, so keep in mind for Toronto, we had 150 from midtown to downtown, but in Richmond Hill, we have 200 uh, based on 200 transactions so far. The average asking price for a any type of freehold property was a million eighty-five. However, the average selling price was one million one hundred and ninety-four thousand dollars. So on both bases, it's cheaper than Toronto, but as you can see, the gap is much wider. So put in other ways, we see the average asking price and the average selling price uh, are lower than what we saw in Toronto. However, the gap between the two is much larger. So here we can say on average properties are managing to sell 10% above asking price. My experience luckily maps onto the reality of the matter according to the numbers. Because in my experience, although things are very bad in Toronto for buyers, things are even worse in Richmond Hill for buyers. And on the flip side of things, obviously, conversely, whatever, is, whatever situation is disadvantageous for buyers is very advantageous for sellers. And when I work for sellers, as I have in Richmond Hill and Toronto within the last month, uh, we do the same thing. So I'm not here to judge sellers. I'm just breaking down the facts of the matter. Obviously, when I work with sellers, as I have, I you know try to get the best price for them. As I work with buyers, I try to get the best price for them. And he, this is as an aside, I've explained this before in previous videos, I actually prefer working with buyers. Uh, not that I don't like working with sellers, but working with buyers to me is more spiritually fulfilling, which is funny, a lot of people laugh of that. But anyways, I can explain that in detail in later videos. And if we take a look at Vaughn, we see the similar thing, 10% above asking as well on average, and the prices there are within the range of Richmond Hill. So what does this mean for buyers and how will this actually impact the condo market? Well, here is what's gonna happen. As I have predicted in the past, and I'm not alone in predicting this, but I think we will see a faster recovery of the condominium market because of all the other outstanding uh, trends that are occurring in terms of the vaccines and more immigration to come and buyers jumping in and being advantageous and causing the price floor to go up. Uh, all that aside, on top of all that I just mentioned and anything else I've missed in terms of maybe the rental market also recovering and uh, landlords jumping back in as well, uh, or those who actually stayed steady, uh, increasing their expectations for what they're gonna sell for. So all that aside, on top of all that, what we're gonna have is this new trend, which is buyers being priced out of the freehold market due to these rampant bidding wars and high competition and actually shifting their expectations towards the condom market. And this does occur. You'd be surprised. This does occur, but not only in real estate actually, but any market. And it's a basic concept in microeconomics. You can liken it to elasticity. Certain things are very inelastic in terms of price. Something, certain things are very elastic. So for instance, you can think of fundamental needs such as water, uh, medicine, all that as inelastic, meaning the change in price does not really shift a change in demand. However, I would have to say that real estate in terms of freehold properties, so you might say, well, shelter is very, very much so a need. Well, I'm talking about private real estate in terms of transacted real estate. I'm not talking about fundamental shelter where you can get in a rental situation. Uh, you know, that's a different story. I'm talking about buying and selling $1.8 million properties, $1.5 million properties. Those are pretty elastic. And naturally, at some point, as the price increases so much so, uh, you're going to have a shift of buyers going from that to a comparable good, which in this case, we can look at as condominiums. Condominiums are a comparable good uh, in terms of what they provide and a much more reasonably priced good right now in terms of the market. 
So I think within the next two months, we're gonna see condo prices go up as well. And I'm not saying freehold prices will dip, by no means do I think that's gonna occur. I think they will still go up, but I don't think they will go up at the frantic pace they are going up at currently because you're gonna see a lot of buyers that are gonna say, well, okay, we're being priced out at our freehold properties. We put offers on seven properties this week and we don't get any of them. We didn't win with our price or our terms or conditions, or maybe we have a bad realtor, whatever the case is. Uh, we're not going to get a freehold property at this price in today's market. So let's just shift towards condominiums and let's put the freehold buying for down the line. We're going to have our detached house, our dream house, maybe in five years. But in the meantime, we're going to buy some real estate so we don't rent anymore. But this is a temporary case of us shifting towards the condominium market for the meantime. And that's going to cause a further influx of demand for the condominium markets. Anyways, this is Sam from Severe Six Real Estate. Thank you for watching. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask me in the comment section or via Gmail or Instagram or get in touch with me with my number, my office number in the description box. Furthermore, feel free to subscribe, comment and like if you happen to enjoy this video. If not, don't do so uh, and simply have a safe and wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching.